In this video, I'm going to talk about certain steps that the JavaScript engine does when it processes functions. I'm going to just walk you through what those steps are, and I'm not going to tell you why. In the next video, I'm going to explain why it even does that, right? What was the point of these steps? But in this video, I'm just going to give you a rundown of what happens behind the scenes when the JavaScript engine processes functions. So let's say I have a simple function like this. Let's say a function foo, which is an empty function, right? It really doesn't do anything. Now, what happens when the JavaScript engine processes a function like this? Remember I told you that functions are basically objects in JavaScript. So when the engine processes a function like this, what it does is it creates an object, which happens to be a function object, and it gives it the name foo. Now, if I were to access foo, I'm gonna get back a function, but what it actually is, is an object, right? It creates an object. It turns out, Whenever the JavaScript engine processes functions, it doesn't create just one object, it actually creates two objects. Now the first object is this function, which is the name, whatever you've given it, right? Here the name is foo, so, so there's a variable called foo which is pointing to this function object. Now what is this other object, right? And there are two objects that are created for every function. What is the second object? The second object that gets created for every function is actually what's called the prototype object. Every time you create a function, there are two objects that are created. One is the object for the function itself. The second is the object for the prototype. So let's say I have another function here, which is the function bar open close, and this is an empty function as well. Now again, JavaScript creates two, fun two objects. One object is for the bar, and the other object is the prototype object, right? So what is the point of the prototype object? We will have to wait for a bit. I'm going to explain what that is in the next tutorial. But for now, remember that there are two objects that are created. Now, how do I access these objects? Now, there are, thanks to these two functions, there are a sum total of four objects created. I can access the object foo by typing foo here. I can access the object bar by using bar. But now, how do I access the prototype object that was created for this line and the prototype object that was created for this line? Turns out what the JavaScript interpreter does is it creates a property on these function objects that point to the prototype objects. So foo has a property which points to the prototype object that was created for foo, and bar also has a property that points to the prototype object that was created for bar. So I can access those prototypes by typing foo dot prototype. So if I hit enter, you see here, there is an object that's created. And similarly, I can do a bar dot prototype, and that's gonna to point to the prototype object for bar. So if I were to draw a diagram here, every time you create a function, JavaScript engine creates a function object, and it also creates this other object, which is the prototype. Now you can access the function object by just accessing the name of the function. But in order to access the prototype object, you have to use a property of the function, because whenever the JavaScript engine creates this prototype object, it sets a property on this function object called prototype, and that property points to this prototype object. So in order to access the prototype of any function, you just say the function name dot prototype, and you're gonna get this object. What's important to remember is that these steps happen for every function, even if the function doesn't necessarily create objects. You see here, the functions foo and bar were just empty functions. It didn't really have anything in the body itself, but still this thing happened, right? So what I'm talking about applies to all functions, even if the function does not create objects. For instance, I can have a function greet. We have seen this before. Console.log hello, right? It's a simple function, which has nothing to do with objects. Right? It, of course, the greet itself is an object, but then it's not creating an object. It's just printing something to the console. I can call greet, open close, and it prints hello like it should. But now the greet itself is a function object, and greet has a prototype object created for it, as all functions do in JavaScript. And I can access that prototype object by typing greet dot prototype, and I get the prototype object. So there is this extra object that's getting created for every function, even if the function has nothing to do with creating objects. Now you might be wondering, why am I explaining this right now? I thought this unit was about creating objects. Well, the thing is, yes, it is about creating objects, and that's actually the reason why this prototype object exists. But if you have a function and you don't create objects with it at all, this prototype object just sits there sadly in the corner and not used. It just comes into effect when you do create objects from functions. For instance, 
we have an empty function called foo here, right? There is this function has no body. It's it's empty. It's like open close, right? I can call foo just like that, and it's not going to do anything. However, I can call new foo, and then what's going to happen? Well, there are a couple of lines that JavaScript is going to inject into the function. It's basically creating a new object and then executing foo with the value of this set to that new object in the context of foo, and then it just returns that thing. So I can basically say var my obj equals new foo, and now I'm still calling foo, but now I'm creating a new object out of it. Since foo doesn't do anything with the this reference, my object is going to be empty, right? So my obj is going to be empty. But the fact that you created a new object from this function, it's time for the prototype object to get busy. Now, how does a prototype object affect the situation here? If you look at the my obj object, I just click on this object and I'm able to expand this. Well, it looks like it's empty, but you notice here there is this weird property called underscore underscore proto underscore underscore. Okay, this property is again something that the JavaScript engine creates for every object that is created using the new keyword on a function. Okay, this property, this weird looking property is actually pointing to an object. Can you guess what object it is? Well, this object turns out is the prototype object of the foo function. Again, to switch to the diagram, the function had the prototype object referred to in the prototype property. If you were to execute the function as is without using the new keyword, this prototype is not used, it doesn't apply. But if I were to execute the function using the new keyword, there is a new object that the JavaScript engine creates, right? You can modify it, you can change it, but then there is this object that the engine creates for you. Now, when the engine creates an object like this, it actually sets a property on this object pointing to this guy, pointing to this prototype object. Okay, this property is called with this weird name, underscore, underscore, proto, underscore, underscore. So I can access this object's proto property and it still points to this prototype, okay? If I were to call this function again another time with a new keyword, there is another object that gets created and guess what? Even this object has the underscore, underscore, proto property which points to the same prototype object, all right? So since the function is the same, the prototype object is also the same and all these different objects that are created using the new keyword all have this proto property which points to this prototype object. Let's verify that in the Firefox console.